Okay, hello everyone and uh, welcome to the GitLab for Drupal and PHP developers from Drupal Campanile. My name is Vladimir and I'm from Australia. It's nice to see everyone here. Hope everyone's doing great. Uh, can someone give me a heads up if you can see my screen? Excellent, thank you. All right, so feel free to post questions in Zoom. If I want to see them, I'll try to scroll them to them after the presentation. And we go from there. So off we go. So my name, as I said, is Vladimir. I'm from Brisbane, Australia. I'm an architect and a Drupal developer. I also became a GitLab hero not that long ago. And I'm very passionate about uh, um, quite a few open source projects and Drupal and GitLab is one of them in my top four. I also contribute to Bootstrap and Docker. So that's kind of my passion. So first, a big thank you for everyone who put together the Drupal camp. I know sharing the knowledge is one of the most important thing we have in the community and especially in such time. So thank you everyone. Thanks for all the volunteers and organizers. I also want to give a big shout to Drupal Association. So they are doing a tremendous job on keeping Drupal.org up and floating as well as Drupal community. Um, so if you would like to know more, help them, please uh, follow the link. I also like to thank every Drupal maker who made Drupal possible, whatever version that is. And if you would like to come contribute, there's a link to Drupal 8 and how to do it. So today, we're gonna talk about what is GitLab. Uh, we're gonna look at 10 tiers of the GitLab and then we're gonna wrap it up. So a disclaimer, it's an all level talk. It's not a marketing talk. It's more talk of, um, I wanna show you how I use Drupal, uh, GitLab and Drupal together, but also uh, I primarily will concentrate on GitLab features and especially on GitLab free features. Uh, I would mention some paid features, but we're not gonna go into looking into them. Uh, yes. So, and the goal of today's presentation is to do the uh, features overview. So GitLab features overview. And the second goal is demonstrate usage on real life projects. There's not gonna be much hands-on things, but I'll try to embed some hands-on stuff so people can see uh, rather than uh, screenshots. Uh, and we'll go from there. So now to our talk, what is GitLab? So if you go anywhere else, you'll probably see that GitLab is like a source control tool. And you probably used one of the source control tools that I'm actually showing right now. So probably most of the people have uh, login into those tools. And uh, when GitLab been there for a few years and uh, in a lot of cases when people mention GitLab or think, oh, it's source control tool, you push your code there and it sits there and it is. But if you actually, um, look what GitLab is, um, like what is source control tool? So when um, Drupal announced they are moving to GitLab, um, yeah, everyone was like, so what's the benefits? So if we look from GitLab from source control tool, so here's the simple theme on Drupal.org. We click on the issue queue. We'll go to a particular uh, issue that was fixed scroll all the way down, you probably saw before this um, commits. And if you ever click on the actual commit, it will take you to the commit page. And once you click on the commit before you would get to a plain Git, now you actually get it into GitLab interface and what GitLab interface really is. So GitLab interface is, uh, uh, as you can see here, it's a repository. So this particular issue, but let's click on the, uh, project over uh, repository. So as you can see, it's a, a standard code repository and you can see a few things here. 
So uh, you can uh, see the tools to clone the repository, uh, download it, find the file history. You have uh, information about the branches. Uh, you have uh, your file explorer right here. And for some of the repositories, you actually have a code breakdown. So if you look at the repository main page, again, you, you have things like fork, uh, starring, so following, the information about the repository and a breakdown of the code. So for example, Bootstrap 4 consists of 60% uh, of the CSS, 21% of JavaScript, HTML, and a bit of a shell script. So PHP wasn't even mentioned there because there is nothing. But um, you also have some additional features that you might not see in other things and all the main menu all on the left. Uh, interesting thing about uh, Dru Drupal, um, uh, GitLab on Drupal.org is there is no GitLab issue queue. We'll get there in a second and we'll see why is that the thing. So this is another example of the repo I have on actually gitlab.com as opposed to drupal.org. And again, we already look at the few things that actually show um, what the repository is. And GitLab comes with a couple of nice features like unlimited private repositories and 2000 CI minutes. Um, the main difference between GitLab and other competitors is apart from gitlab.com, which is hosted in the cloud, you can register and get your free things or get a paid account. You also have a self-hosted version and self-hosted version is something you can take with you and install your own server and run your own repositories. So, and uh, this is not the case with others. You actually need to buy the enterprise version of the tools. Uh, the basic tier, uh, they call it free or core tier. So free for gitlab.com and core for self-hosted, it's open source. It's written in Ruby and you can actually go and commit to the, help them to build it, which is kind of cool because you can't do that with GitHub, for example. And there are a number of variations, so I'm gonna break it down for you. So we have a self-hosted version. It's the one that you take with you. So download as a container or as a files, install on your Ubuntu server, for example. And there's gitlab.com, so the cloud version, the one you get if you go to gitlab.com. So you have a community edition, one that is open source, and you get an enterprise edition, the one you get paid for. Uh, so, and basically different price give you more and more features. They are more towards enterprise uh, phase. And GitLab has this cool policy. If, if your individual user commits the pull request, it all goes to free features. Uh, but if one of the clients commit the feature, for example, one of the big clients, uh, they would decide which tier it would go to. And eventually some features from uh, paid features are dripping down into the uh, free tier once they see there is a, a lot of requests for it. Or the client would specifically request to make it open source, which is kind of cool. So they actually, again, so it's not as we saw uh, part of code repository GitLab is also a, what they call a complete DevOps platform. So you might ask what's the difference between uh, full on platform and just code repository. So they actually have this 10 tiers that they um, uh, tell um, sh that they market basically. And they say, we have tools that actually cater for all of the 10 tiers. Uh, so first they said, okay, so those tiers fit into four teams that usually operate. So it's a dev team and ops team, which are in the middle and how they integrate with the management team on top and security team on the bottom. So that's the 10 tiers. And yep. Yeah, so we're going to look at, uh, basically manage plan, create more depth. And then we're going to look at some features, um, uh, into verify to defend, um, and go from there. So without further ado, uh, first it's a management. So management, um, it's a tool, uh, gives you the tools to manage your projects. And the first thing is repositories. So if we look at the new repository, so I'm here, 
in my GitLab account, I can go and create a new repository, which is a new project. Right, so I have um, Drupal Camp Vanilla. Uh, I can choose between private and public, and I can initialize with readme file, create a project. There you go, my project is created and I can start using it. Uh, if I'll track back, uh, other couple of cool things. So you can not only create a blank project and start using it, you can also have a template and template are growing. Unfortunately, there is no uh, Drupal templates yet, but hopefully soon we'll be able to put it there. You can use your own template as well. And here it says, learn how to contribute the built-in templates. Uh, you can import project from different sort of uh, repositories. At the moment, as you can see, there are about nine of them. And you can also use GitLab as a continuous integration, continuous delivery tool without storing the code here. Uh, but I'll let you explore that if that's something you're looking for. But as in our case, we already created the project and here it is. Uh, blank project, no files, no nothing. So if you want to add readme and say uh, something like sample of Drupal camp vanilla 20 and I can commit changes from here and here we go. We have a repository and our repository have one file. And it's a readme that shows you the readme in MD form. So we also can manage users, right? And um, uh, with users, a couple of interesting features I pick up. First is a granular role. So uh, if you um, have members and you wanna add a new member, you have number of roles. So by default, uh, GitLab actually have prescriptive roles, so you can't change them. You have guest reported developer and maintainer. And I think they fit most of the project. There are some cases where you want a bit more granularity, but overall it's kind of quite nice. And you can give this users flexible permissions. So um, there is a table that actually explains uh, what users can do. So for example, if you want someone who just can create an issues and maybe see some logs, you might create a guest. Uh, if you want someone a bit more interactive, you create a reporter and then developer maintain and then owner get a bit more permissions. You can see them uh, by the link below. And what are they? Uh, there's also protected tags which is quite an interesting. So if you're a developer and you know what the tags are, you can actually um, create number of tags and assign them to the users, which is kind of cool feature. So only specific users can use specific tags on your repository. Uh, there uh, also there is uh, authentication uh, features. So something like SAML integration and two-factor authentication also built in but this is kind of de facto these days in the more security world. So there are other things in Manage and I didn't go into them, but this is more business oriented tool. So you can uh, check out themselves. It's all um, about analytics, management events, all really, really business oriented tools. And this is where uh, Drupal for project manager is kind of more suitable topic. So without further ado, the next thing is a planning and planning, uh, basically is to allow you to plan your project and plan your development. So this is an example of quite a crazy uh, issue board, but I'm sure you work um, on some sort of issue board, be it Trello, Jira or something else. So this is how uh, quite a big GitLab board is, looks like. But uh, what is issue tracking, like in a nutshell? And so GitLab allows you to, uh, gives you labels. So on our project, now uh, there is a section called issues. And if you click on issues, it shows you uh, lists, boards, labels, milestones, and service desk. So labels uh, allow you to create uh, a new label or generate default set, sets of labels. So if I click on my new project, generate default sets of labels, um, it created bug, confirmed, critical, discussion, documentation, enhancement, suggestion, and support. So uh, I might use those tags or click and modify them if I want to. 
So the next thing is issues. So now we created the labels, we can go and create the issues. So if I click on a list, I can see the list of issues. There is no issues. I can import them if I have it somewhere else. I'll create a new issue. Create basic Drupal repository. I can inside it to myself. Uh, uh, there are a few interesting things. So you can see there is milestone labels and weights. When we look at the labels at the moment, then we can assign assign them to a specific uh, labels this issue. Submit an issue. So once we submit it, we can see the issue history here. Few interesting things on the right hand side. So you can see there is a due date. So I can, I can actually assign. Uh, a due date um, and would be notified. I can also uh, change the SNE, change another user here, put another user on. Uh, and there is more features in here. So you can actually unsubscribe from notifications as well. But if you look at the bigger picture, which is uh, our list. So you can see now in our list, we have an issue which has a due date and has two labels. So the next thing is a milestone. So milestone is something uh, like a sprint. You, you might treat it as a sprint or you might treat it as a version. So if you have a version of your presentation, you can create something like a new milestone, call it version zero one. You can set the dates if you really want to and put the description. So now you can see milestone is empty. This burn down chart, but it requires you to add start or end date. There is a talk about the issues I did for GitLab. If you want to have a look at those, it goes a bit more specific. But the last thing we're going to do is go to our list and assign the specific um, milestone to our issue. So here, have a milestone. Sign one. So it says, uh, you've been assigned milestone just now. And if we go to our milestone, now we can see there is a, our issues already in milestone. So you can imagine we can build up the issues here and uh, see how our version zero one is tracking. So boards, boards probably one of the most used one. Boards are quite cool. So at the moment before you were able to use one board and here again, uh, GitLab allows you to do at default tags uh, and it converts them to the list like to do and doing or it can go and uh, uh, you can do it yourself. So at the moment, if uh, I, I drag my issue into do and click on my issue, uh, it would actually just tag it. You can see it on the right hand side. It would tag it as to do and add it to the history. The cool thing about the boards, you can actually have a lot of boards there. So now you can create multiple boards. So, so for example, something for marketing, something for um, specific user view and so on and so forth. Uh, there is also a time tracking. So if we look at our task and we estimated that our task can be done in four hours, you can do slash and it actually gives you a lot of tags. Well, I don't do I said I estimated that it's gonna take four hours. I already spent one hour. I can do it as a comment. I think I did something wrong with that. But now you can see the estimates is four hours in time tracking. Oh, I misspelled it. Uh, spend one hour. There you go. So now you can see here in time tracking if you spend one hour out four hours. There's also a service desk. So if your company running support, 
you can go and check out the service desk. It's now available here. It's recently moved, like a month ago, it moved from a paid to a free feature. And your client can email you to a specific email. And you can have a specific board for your client here without showing them all the issues you have. There's also other things like Kanban, uh, Epics, Roadmaps, Requirement Management. In fact, the boards are quite generic and you can use them on waterfalls or agile projects or whatever you like. So that's kind of uh, summarizes the planning section. So next we're gonna do the actual source code management uh, and the, the tier called Create. And it says manage code through branching tools. So source code management can bunch of good stuff there. Um, I'm, I'm not gonna go again, probably majority of you are familiar with what um, branches are uh, and what uh, code repository is. So you create a file and it's kind of version in the file. So if you go to our files list, and you try to edit our readme file. This is treated as a new version of the file and you can actually add the commit message here, commit. And once you look at the commits, which is also here, you can see the history uh, of commits. So the next, uh, the cool feature, what I like about GitLab, it's a graph. Uh, so here is quite simple. I only have two commits, it's just me. But if you look at something more complicated that we have on the project, you can see something like that. So two developers are working on your repository. They uh, have different releases. So you can see the dots are kind of tags, but they also have different um, branches. So feature branch and maybe a stage branch here, and this development branch and a release branch. So you can have a nice look how project uh, was moving around. Uh, the, it, it's also quite nice a uh, search tool as well. So you can go to, let's go back to our Drupal repository of Bootstrap 4. So here uh, we can actually go and find the file. So if I wanna find specific SAS file, uh, so I can see, yep, oh, there is a lot of SAS files. So I'm looking for something specific, CSS, don't. And yeah, so you can go and find specific. Um, um, if you're looking for paragraph of CSS, um, you would find that. So you can go and explore the file. So it's a quite nice search feature as well. So next, uh, to-dos. To-dos are quite nice because um, um, you can see all your to-dos across different projects. So if you work on one project, it's not really necessary because you can see all your tasks, but you can also add a task as a to-do and uh, yeah, or a comment as a to-do and you will have this nice view of to-dos across all the, um, all the projects, which is kind of cool, I mean to actually focus on what needs to be done. There's also snippets. So snippets, um, it's uh, if you don't need a repository and you uh, want to create just a quick uh, code example, you can do that quite easily. So in GitLab, here you can, instead of uh, uh, new projects, you can create a new snippet which would be a new code snippet to just demonstrate something or make a point or maybe work on something, you know, like a quick JavaScript uh, script, something like that, that's always cool. So if we click on a new snippet, all it does, it shows you the file, what's inside the file title and optional descriptions. The snippet section is now on the left-hand side. Uh, we also uh, look at already at the uh, web ID, I think this slide is just, yeah. Okay, I'll right, just continue with, the, continue with the tools available for developers. So here, um, 
when you do a merge request, so if you're on your branch and you want to merge, apart from normal merge commit, uh, some people call it pull requests, uh, merge commit with semi-linear history, you can also fast forward merge. Uh, and it says here, so no merge commits are created and all merges are fast forwarded. So something, if you work with Git and did fast forwarding before just by using the common line tool, now you can actually add it, uh, use it from, uh, from your from your interface uh, same as squash and merge so squash and merge is when you create a merge request again you have your feature and you want to merge into, into your development branch for example you can squash all your commits it's um, for those who don't know what squash and commits are it's uh, when you have a lot of code for example you put 15 or 16 commits and maybe you have thousands lines of code especially for mono repos all these commits are in history so all these commits in our graph that we looked before. So in our repository graph. So here, all these commits are actually gonna be, uh, gonna take some space. So if you wanna sh uh, squash them into one commit, that's what it allows you to do. Uh, we already talked about to-dos. Uh, merge request and conflict resolution right from the uh, right from the uh, interface. So when you do a merge request and uh, there is a approval, but there is also a merge request conflict resolution. So you can see the differences, for example, in your conflicts, and then you can go and merge them. You can see the buttons on the right, use ours, use theirs. So for people who are familiar from uh, using something like Git Tower, that's, um, that's the tool to go to. Merge request review are quite handy. So you can actually uh, look at the particular merge request, see the differences here. So you can see something was removed, something was added. A uh, few comments were already added, so you can um, go and have a look and uh, say if you're happy with the mer merge request. Uh, for smaller projects, we usually don't have the, uh, uh, we allow people to merge their own requests after a review, but on a bigger projects, you probably have two people who only can allow you. So they both need to review your code because before it goes somewhere into like dev branch. So that's a useful feature to have and you can see actually um, other people comments as well. You can also revert commits and cherry pick commits. Again, some other Git features that were put together into uh, code repository. So uh, revert and cherry pick through an interface. So if you've done a revert and cherry pick through a common line, now you can do it through the interface as well. Other uh, protected branches. So it means um, what protected branches are when you create merge requests, sometimes you want to delete your feature branch because you don't want, if you have 300 or 400 features, you don't want 300 or 400 extra branches. And usually you would delete once the feature is complete, you would delete your branch. And uh, GitLab has a checkbox that says, okay, yep, after this branch merge, delete it. Uh, unfortunately, Sometimes you can do it to a dev branch when it merged dev to stage or stage to production. So in this case, you can go into settings in your repository and say dev branch, stage branch, and master branch are protected. In fact, master branch is protected by default. So they won't be deleted. Uh, even if person requested to be deleted after a pull request, it would say, no, can't do that. This branch is protected. And then you can also see on protected branches, you can tell who is allowed to merge, who is allowed to push one of, from one of those user groups. Cherry picking changes. I already mentioned that apart from revert, you can do a cherry picking. So again, uh, some uh, Git features moved into user interface. Custom notifications. So you can go and set up a notifications from your user profile. So what sort of things, um, um, you want to receive and where. So there are, again, prescribed uh, levels of notifications for specific repositories. So you can go say, I only want to watch or want to participate or just don't bother me at all. Or only when someone mentions me, send me a notification and how, for example, on email. 
All right, so you can publish static websites with GitLab pages and custom domains. So again, static page. Static page is something that consists only of HTML, JavaScript, and CSS. You can publish it and have a page. But the good thing is you can actually go and instead of using GitLab pages.gitlab.io, like here, you can actually use your custom domain. My also app.com or something like that and actually host your static file right from GitLab to a custom domain, which is kind of cool. And reach Markdown support. So Markdown, you already saw me creating readme file.md. MD stands for Markdown. Uh, developers use Markdown a lot. And uh, yeah, so you can actually see, here's my issue title. So a lot of this formatting is uh, uh, done using Markdown. So if we look at our file here, And if we know our markdown, which is not hard to pick up, we can add some cool tools like links, maybe second header. And maybe some code. Commit our changes and look how it looks. So we added, you can see header two, uh, you can see we highlighted Drupal nine and you can see there is a code example here, which is eager hello world. So Markdown is um, quite nice, I like it. And the uh, UX on it is awesome. So issue merge and merge request templates. So apart from templates for repositories, you can have a new issues with templates. So for example, GitLab for a community that actually have a template of a bug for gitlab.com, future proposal or research proposal. So you can create your own template for the issues and merge requests. So for example, merge requests can be a developer merge request from the feature to dev. But if you create in a specific release, so something to production, you can have a production template for merge request, which lists all the features and maybe some extra information that will go eventually to the client and something like that. All right, so uh, we're talking about the code review now. So we can have an assignee for the code review so we can assign a person for a code review. And now I think you can have multiple assignees if you're doing that. So if someone is requesting code review, you can say, hey, uh, please uh, review my code. Uh, there is image discussion. So something that GitLab been tapping into design market as well. So if you have an image there, uh, you can approach image quite easily. But what you can also do, you can comment on this specific image. So you can actually go and uh, mark specific comments. Uh, this is a very simple example. But imagine you have a website and you want to um, give feedback to your designer, a designer wants to give some feedback to you, you can do it right on the image. Merge request commit discussions. So this is very useful for me. So if we have a code and we are discussing specific code, if it's a good or bad thing, we can actually have a specific comments related to a file, but we also can have specific comments related to a line. And the, each line has a link so we can either send, share the link around for this specific line in this specific um, code review, or we can go and say, look, uh, I think that should be done like that. And the person replies, no, 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 that's why I did this. And we can actually have a, a comments right on the line, in line, as well as on a specific file. So here's an example of inline discussion where we click on a specific line in our navigator and can write a specific comment here. Uh, we also have web ID already demonstrated too. So web ID is when you click edit, um, you go there. Web ID has a bit different interface. I actually have a list of files here. So you can imagine if we have a different repo, uh, it would have more files. Let me quickly check if I can. 
groups, projects. I'll, I'll come back to it later, Fab ID. So Fab ID, it's something that you actually can edit your code online in a browser and then commit it. Uh, there are a few issues. Last time I checked, a couple of months ago, there was still a few issues to do it on uh, mobile, but it's getting better. So here, how it looks for a SAS file. So you can actually see there is, a, it's a bit extended. So you have a number of files on your left and SAS file have some variables which GitLab can pick up and then actually edit it. And you can see there is also a preview for static file. There is also a preview that you can actually um, use. So this is the example of to-do app and how to do, how to do it in the editor web ID. So for the next section, uh, I merged those sections together because first of all, there's a lot of features to go through. Secondly, I don't use them all. Um, and thirdly, it goes very, very technical, especially when we start talking about things like Kubernetes, that's a topic for the whole other discussions. But basically stages from verify and so on and so forth, they are uh, somehow related to continuous integration and continuous delivery. Although you can see that continuous integration is marked as a part of verify stage and continuous delivery is marked as a part of the release stage. Um, package and secure uh, do relate a lot to a release stage as well as configure, monitor, and defend would go into application monitoring. So those features are basically your code analysis, code quality, uh, releases, containers, Kubernetes, metrics, reporting, and security. That's what it is. And uh, I'm just gonna highlight the features I'm using uh, for Drupal projects. So first of all is building continuous integration, and continuous delivery. I mentioned before GitLab gives you 2000 minutes for free per user, per group. So group is like your company. So if you uh, don't have any companies, it just your, uh, ta your username would get 2000 minutes. And you can use them for different things. So here's an example of good pipelines and some of them probably would go and do something like static code analysis. Um, Saslint, PHP, uh, code sniffer for Drupal standards. We're gonna look at them in a second and it's gonna show you them in, uh, in the stages. And again, CI, CD is a topic again for another whole presentation. Uh, and you probably saw the presentations before talking about CI, CD. Uh, I think yeah, it's just uh, too deep, but the idea is you have something like, for example, prepare, uh, test, uh, or lint, then prepare the release, then do a release, and then do some testing. So here's an example of... Um, CI uh, file. So GitLab has its own CI file. And if you look at the repository here, so if you, if you go back to our repository, uh, they wanted to enable it by default, but um, they stopped doing that because again, people without the knowledge would actually go and start using the CI minutes without knowing that it's actually happening. Uh, it's called setup CI CD and all it does, it creates this .gitlab YAML file. So now we're looking at one of the stages of this GitLab YAML file. And particularly it uses a container from container repository uh, on Docker Hub. And you can see the stage is lint and all it does, it basically downloads the code sniffer for Drupal and then it runs for specific extensions using particular uh, configuration. So in the back, all it does, it tests code sniffing for errors on custom modules. So it's a Drupal project, 
but it doesn't go and test standards inside the Drupal. It only tests Drupal in the projects and it defines this PHP CS CI rule set XML file. So the output of the CI, I get is something like that. It gives me a file and what's wrong with it and why the standards didn't pass through. So it's a very good idea to have the standards for your JavaScript files, SAS files, uh, PHP files. And this is one of those stages where it would go and fail. And then your developer automatically, need, uh, then your developer needs to go and fix it. Or if you have a tool that automatically fix small errors like tab spaces, uh, identation, variable names, you can try to do it but sometimes it's not very good at automatically fixing. So here is an example of my pipeline. You can see there's two stages, linked and set up. And you can see that uh, the one that failed, we look at the PHPCS twig, which is second from the bottom. So it failed and it didn't go to Drupal 8 install, which is the next stage which is set up. So it's installing Drupal 8 in CI. You can see there is all, there is three stages that passed lint sas but two stages that failed but there is one with exclamation mark the exclamation mark usually means hey you actually um, you actually uh, it failed but you allow this container to fail so next one is built in and custom project templates as i showed you before there are no such php templates yet there is ruby there is Spring, Node.js, Express. They start working together with uh, go new project. They start working together with um, Netlify. So if you're using Netlify, there are templates for Hugo Jekyll. Uh, but there are also some GitLab templates. There is Android app template and iOS now which is a new thing comparing to the screenshot I have. Uh, this is Spring template. So the next um, CI CD was shared personal runners. So what's happening here, uh, if it's too overwhelming, oops. So GitLab gives you uh, shared runners. So it gives you eight shared runners, which are here on the right. And that's what actually allows you to run your continuous integration, continuous development pipelines. Uh, and eventually, if it's project is big, you will run out of GitLab minutes. You can either buy them or what you can do here on the left-hand side, you can actually go and install a runner on your machine. For example, $5 digital ocean machine can have a runner there and connect them to specific repos. Uh, we did that a few times. For example, one time we needed a lot of testing just before the going live. So we spin a spin off eight extra boxes here. Uh, so it means once um, shared runners run out of minutes or oh, they all in use. So let's say we have eight developers working, all pushing code, all trying to do some something with runners. Uh, they either need to sit there and wait, or you can spin off uh, your own machines and add them here, which is kind of very nice functionality there. Uh, protected variables. So this is coming from security section, one of the uh, last sections. So you can uh, have environmental variables and it's very good because some people use secrets from uh, you know somewhere else. They sit somewhere else here you can uh, for your specific project, you can go into settings uh, here, CI, CD, and this is where you can set up the variables. The variables help you to set up, you know, secret keys like, like deployment keys and all that stuff. You want, you don't need to uh, commit it. It's actually a very bad practice to commit it, but you can go and add environmental variables and even tag specific branches if you want them on specific branches only. Uh, so scheduled or triggering pipelines. So apart from, um, so here's our CI CD, apart from your pipelines and apart from your jobs that currently are running, you can have a schedule. So for example, you wanna say, I wanna run all tasks, CI tasks that are uh, marked as scheduled on master branch every night. 
for syncing or something else, or maybe collecting some data when there's not many users, you can do that. So you can do a periodic uh, schedule pipeline that is run, which is very good. And the interface is also can quite nice. You can new schedule here, you can do custom cron syntax or every day at 4 a.m. Select time zone, which branch you wanna run. And if you want the variables, you can define variables here or you can still use your variables that are actually part of um, your um, settings. So GitLab releases. So relatively new feature, surprise, surprise. Um, GitHub had it forever when they can package your applications, but GitLab only had it last year. Uh, saying that, it's um, nothing different, so you can have releases. So, and now it has a change log, it has a links to binaries if it includes binaries, so maybe zip up source code. So, deploy from chat, another interesting feature. So, you can actually link your chat application, something like Slack, uh, and allow some users to control it. For example, create a new issue, which is, um, I mean, probably harmless tasks, uh, or you can even deploy, here's project name, deploy from two. So there is a chat integration. You need to pass some keys around, but it's again, if you're a chat ops kind of company, it does work very nice. Uh, now I'm tapping the features I didn't use, but they're there for you to use. So the serverless, you can use serverless functions uh, managed by Knative. So, uh, you can start creating your serverless functions and execute them uh, from the operation section of your repo. So if you're into serverless and doing a lot of that on some of the proprietary cloud, now you can use them uh, in GitLab as well and they're using um, default Knative standard. So application performance monitoring, going into monitoring, so GitLab uh, does collect some application monitoring once you release it. Uh, so you can pipe, they, they work with a number of applications like Prometheus and they recently announced the collaboration with Elastic. So they collect your logs and then they can show you what your live application is doing. Uh, they can do a server monitoring as well. So you can hook up the worker and the worker would feed you the data. What's do, what are you doing? So for example, if you're using hosting like Acquia, they would give you graphs of that. But if you, for example, using your own hosting, there is nothing stopping you feeding this data of your custom server back to yourself to see what your, what your server is actually, how your server is actually performing, which is quite nice. There is a bit of a setup involved, uh, but it's uh, the functionality is there for you to use. So built-in container registry. This is kind of cool, but uh, I don't use that very often. The reason is, uh, I use public containers a lot, as you saw from the example, and uh, they are available from Docker Hub. Um, and the hostings I use, like Acquia, they don't allow you container deployment. But if you are in a market of actually deploying your containers, application inside your container, uh, GitLab gives you a registry. So, and the registry is now free, so you can actually use it. I think there's a limit on uh, space, of course. But uh, if your app is deployed using the container, it's, um, yeah, uh, registry is right there. Deploy of Helm, Ingress, and Prometheus on Kubernetes. So again, if you're a Kubernetes person, and I know a lot of people are looking to Kubernetes these days, uh, you can do a deployment using Kubernetes. You can enable Kubernetes cluster and then actually link it to uh, Helm, Ingress, uh, the list is now growing and there is, I think now there's also integration with uh, Google Cloud as well. So you, it automatically can control your Kubernetes cluster for you. Uh, group, group level Kubernetes clusters. So if you go to into integrate Kubernetes cluster automation, this is where you can connect your custom cloud like Google Cloud, Azure or AWS and spin off Kubernetes there um, with your application and then hook up your GitLab so it can, can actually release straight into your Kubernetes cluster. 
Uh, and there's even an integration with existing Kubernetes clusters. So this is kind of summarizes the, um, those, um, I think six levels, but this is something that's available for free. Again, there is way more free features and pay features as well for you to explore. But, um, one more thing I wanted to mention is uh, I'll just cover quickly some features that recently moved to the core. There's a big article from four weeks ago by Sid, who is a creator, of, co creator of GitLab, and he mentioned uh, 18 GitLab features are moving to the open source. So they basically said, okay, uh, usually we move not many features from uh, enterprise to open source, but this time, because uh, unprecedented time, I want to give a bit more to a community. So, and some features are kind of cool. So in your planning, uh, you have related issues uh, now available. So if you have related issues, you can track them there. Uh, one thing to mention about boards is you, as you saw, they are quite simple, but don't make simplicity kind of uh, scare you. Uh, they're actually quite nice uh, in terms of how quickly you can onboard your clients and how quickly you can uh, let people, uh, you know, jump on those things. I found it's much better than using Jira, for example. You can export issues. So as you saw uh, before, I uh, added estimate and the time spent. You couldn't export this data, issues data uh, by default on the free tier. So now you can, you can actually export as a CSV and import it into any app if you're using some financing app. Uh, issue board focus mode. So something simple, but you can actually put uh, focus mode and uh, stretch your uh, board all the way to a full screen, kind of inside your browser. Service desk. Service desk, I already mentioned it. It's something where you, you can give your client specific email and have a specific board for issues raised just by clients. So this is now open source. So you need to activate your service desk. It will give you an email and uh, it will give you um, in your menu, just uh, you will see the service desk uh, logo there. And you can click and see what, if your client raised any issues about your service. So in the summary, we'll look at what is GitLab. And obviously um, a lot of people say, well, GitLab is another source code managing, management tool. Whereas from what we saw, GitLab is actually a complete DevOps platform. We didn't really dig into a lot of stuff that's on the right hand side, but it goes very technical, especially in this, uh, I would recommend you to go and explore the security section of it. It's kind of cool. We'll look at the 10 tiers of GitLab, which allows uh, dev uh, team and operations team work very well with the security team and management teams. And again, we'll look uh, at some of the features that I hope you haven't seen before, didn't know about. Uh, I would encourage you to go to GitLab homepage and if something here is actually of interest, just to research it. Uh, again, it's a very, very big platform. Uh, I had a few questions about saying, oh, it looks like a monolith and they are calling this platform a monolith. So what's the advantages why we are used to, you know, work on a GitHub and use Circle CI for our CI. But eventually, as you can see, sometimes you just need uh, one application to do it all. Um, it might not suit your business very well and you would need to these distributed things. But for the company that I run, I don't need separate Jira and separate Circle CI. I have everything kind of managed by GitLab and all I do is yeah, deploy my applications. Uh, so I would give you some links to read. And uh, if you have any questions, questions, feel free to fire in Slack or on Zoom and uh, or you can tag me on uh, Twitter and let me know what you think about my presentation or if you would like to yeah, have some comments. And thanks for listening. I hope that was inside. Thank you.
Vladimir. That was great. Um, do you have any questions? Uh, we still have five minutes for for our next session. Okay. Going once. Um, going twice. Okay, I guess that's it. Um, I think everybody was able to really appreciate GitLab now. <laughs> they don't have any questions. Um, I would like to personally um, say my appreciation. I was personally looking forward to this. Um, I needed someone to uh, really tell me more about GitLab. I know how different it is in my head, but it's just because everyone else has been GitHub. Um, <laughs> I need someone to push me further. That's just a personal comment. <laughs> yep, and that's that's very true. Uh, yeah, so you can see people using Atlassian a lot or Microsoft a lot these days, they're big companies. But um, there is a version of this talk from a year ago, and I go more a bit into history. And there is, or oh, there is actually a couple of blog posts as well where. Uh, a lot of people, once Microsoft announced the purchase of GitHub, they start moving to GitLab and mm -hmm. uh, how they dealt with it for about two or three weeks with this massive um, influx of people. So yeah, it's, it's again, uh, they all tools, they're all great and, and it's good to have a competition. So this is something that I use day to day. So I just like to share. Great, awesome. Okay, thanks again. Glad thanks for listening, thanks. So we still have three minutes for the next sessions or next session. Um, let me stop the recording now. Um,